All right, so guys, here it is. Um, day, sort of, the day before the day of reckoning, I guess it is for Arsenal. Man City versus Arsenal. There's nothing else I can say. These are the best two clubs in the Premier League in England at this very moment in time. You can debate it all you want. You can go ahead and bring out the best history facts, bring out who's got goals expected, who's got... It means absolutely nothing. Because as it stands right now, Arsenal, top of the Premier League, five points clear. Man City behind them with two games in hand. Arsenal, unfortunately, have been dropping points. Past three games, only three points collected. It, you know, they don't make it easy on themselves. We don't make it easy on ourselves, obviously. I mean, this is the Gunners View channel, you know. We don't make it easier on ourselves as Arsenal. But I have to speak on it. Tomorrow is the day. It's the game of reckoning. It's the game of all games for us tomorrow. If we go out there tomorrow and we don't put our all in it and we don't go out and give everything that we have tomorrow, then I, I, I honestly don't feel like we deserve, you know, to... Um, or let me not say that we don't deserve the, the Premier League. I would say that it's it's less deserved because I feel the last few games was very cowardly of us. I feel like it was very timid, very boyish displays of soccer. I say boyish because, you know, as a young, as, as a boy, you, you're very scared and intimidated by big situations. You don't know how to handle the emotions. And therefore, I feel the description is, you know, fitting, quite fitting for Arsenal. Last few games that we played, we've been very boyish. We've been very timid. We've been very nervous. And I feel like as I understand that it's a very young team. But you are in the sphere that you're in because you played amazing football. You have not let fear get into you. It's quite disappointing, actually, when you to speak about the team that now, when it's the game end, the business side, the business end of the league, and now we get into this whole nervousness and letting all these things get to us. It really is um, not looking good for us. I'm not going to speak about though, the injuries. I'm not going to speak about the people that were missing, even though it does affect the team, definitely. But... That's where management comes into it. That's where being a manager comes into it. That all falls on Nikel Arteta. How are you going to manage the situation? What are you going to do? You had the time in January. You had the time during summer to make the transfers. This is what you have. And I must say that I have to criticize the fact that we are here now at the game end. A lot of us and a lot of the people have been speaking about this. What happens when we get to this point in time? This specific scenario where you've got a couple of games left to clinch it. The title is right in front of you. But because you did not have the squad depth, because you did not prepare your players accordingly, you don't have backups to your backups. This is what we're left with. And if we're going to go to the ATL tomorrow, and we're going to, he's going to put his trust in holding. Because if it's the Mikel Arteta that I know, I believe that that man is going to play the same team. If he sees there's nothing wrong with it, he's not going to try and fix it. He's not going to try and improve it. He's not going to try and do anything about it because it's working. So I believe that Mikel Arteta tomorrow is going to go with the same lineup. And yes, I'm one of the people that are going to critique that. If he puts holding tomorrow against Haaland, I, I, I'm not sure what kind of game we're going to have. I think we should prepare ourselves then for for um, a bit of a hammering, if, 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 if that makes sense, if, if that's a befitting description. Because in the FA Cup, we got a glimpse of what would happen if Haaland were to come up against Holding. He was really struggling. He was grasping at straws. He was doing everything he can to keep the big man out. And I don't know if, if he's going to be enough. Look, we could even say that, you know what? Go ahead and put White as centre-back and let Holding play right-back or... Some people have suggested as well on the timeline I've seen on Twitter that, you know what, why not bring in Partey as a right back? Because he was playing, he was he was a defender at Atletico Madrid. He would cover as a defender before. I'm not sure. Some people are calling for Kieran Tierney to come in at left back and let Zinchenko go into a double pivot inside there with Jorginho and have um, Partey at the back and bring back White and bring back... So that the, at the back is got defenders, full-fledged defenders, full, full back. I don't know, guys. Um, it's really funny to see as well that all of us are out there in the comments, you know, trying to come up with these solutions, trying to come up with like, okay, guys, if we play like this and if we have these, at the end of the day, this is the kind of mentality or this is the kind of boyish nervousness that I'm speaking about that is just reverberating around our whole fan base right now. We're, we're scared and we're intimidated. It's Manchester City. And what, we've re what we're not seeing, the reality of it is we are number one on the league table. It, it, that hasn't changed and that doesn't have to change. I say that the boys go out there and they play for their lives. That's all I could really ask from those guys. All of the young guys out there, it's a young team. Go out there, give it your all. I, I, I honestly, if, if we go out there tomorrow and we give it our best and we still come back as second best and, and you know Man City or Man City, they're an unbelievable team. That's known. It's a fact. But we're just as unbelievable this season, I believe. And I think that things are getting to us. But if we go out there tomorrow, I'm saying as an Arsenal fan, we go out there and they give our best. And I see that they've given their best. But Man City was just overwhelming them. And Man City come away with two goals to nil or 2-1. 
I'll be proud of my team because then there's something there to look, there's something there to say, all right, thank you very much. You know, you didn't go out there and concede and say, you know what, you are better than us. We are younger. You have more experience. The league is yours. Take it. That will be very disappointing. That will be something where I'm like, then we shouldn't have even walked out on that pitch. Then they shouldn't have not, they should have just said, you know what, we concede. Just like on FIFA, we forfeit the match. Take all three points. It doesn't matter. But what I want from these guys is to actually go out there and show some grit. Show us, the fans, how much you actually want this. It's time now. You know, with the games that are coming out, it's time right now for Arsenal to buckle up. You know, get your big ball, big boy pants on and let's get going. That's all I wanted to say. And, um, you know, I, I, I'm not even going to come here and, pr and put out my starting eleven. I have to put my trust in Mikel Arteta. You know, we need to trust the process. Let's see what the process will do for us. But I have to say that right now we are being picked out for the things that he did not fix. And these things are going to need fixing next season. I am not going to accept next season. Us being in the Champions League, us playing at the top of top competitions, and there's hold, holding at the back. I'm so sorry. It's no dig to holding. Thank you so much for actually coming through and being, and actually, you know, doing a decent job. There's only so much we can ask for him. He, he, you know, he's, he's not going to be so good on the ball because he's not good on the ball. He's not that kind of guy. He's not going to play, you know, the impressive passes. Does he try to? He tries, and he gets it wrong, but he tries. And I don't think there's much blame that we can put on one, just one person. It's the whole team. It's a team. Unfortunately, it's a game of 10 players, and if one player or two players, we cannot blame. It's everyone in there, you know. So today, I just wanted to come on here and say tomorrow, we need to give it our all. We know what we're coming up against. I know that we can do it. Anything can happen. The football, the football guards are listening. Football guards are listening. And I'm telling you right now, you keep your head down, you work hard, you keep pushing until the last minute, and we could really make history tomorrow as Arsenal. And not to say that it's done. Whether we come out with a win tomorrow, it's still not done. There's still a few games to play. Until that last whistle on May 28th, that last miss whistle hits, that's when that game against Wolves, when that final whistle goes, that's when we can say, all right, now it's done. Job has been done and we can celebrate or not. But either way, I just want to say I'm proud of my team. I'm proud of Arsenal. And we go again tomorrow. Manchester City at the Etihad, we're coming for you. And I'm proud of my team. Regardless of what might happen, I'm proud of my team, man. Let's try and do this. Let's try and work hard. Again, I want to just thank you guys before I let you go. I want to thank you guys for, you know, surpassing 50, 50 subscribers. One away to 100, road to 100. You know, smash that like and the subscribe button. Smash that little notification so that the algorithm can be on your side. Because it's not. Um, this was Kanju Mangaba. This was the Gunners View. I'll see you tomorrow post-match. Let's go, Gunners.